masonry. Using the remains of the bell tower as a starting point, the telescoping timber structure lends itself to being built in three sections. Lower section, heavily built to take the load of everything above and interface with the stonework below. This section lends itself to being prefabricated in the eastern U.S. where large straight oaks can be found. Upper section, stoutly built and reinforced with braces and iron tension rods. This section would be suited to the shorter, curvier oaks in the UK. The spire. This light but strong structure reaches heavenward. The spire is a natural for being prefabricated in Western Canada, where long, light, strong, rot-resistant timber is plentiful. These sections slide inside one another, allowing them to be built at ground level and hoisted aloft once assembled. Adapting the telescoping steeple idea to the seismic considerations of New Zealand, we propose to have the spire float on a series of captured springs, allowing the spire to flex in any direction. The spire mast, securely mounted in the middle of the spire, would be fitted with a stout chain. That chain would lead down through the middle of the steeple and attach to a large pendulum below ground level. That counterweight prevents the spire from overturning. Being a free-swinging weight, it would act as a mass damper, greatly mitigating seismic events. Once the prefabricated sections arrive in Christchurch, crews will quickly set about assembling the sections. Before long, the lower section would be assembled and ready to raise. As soon as everything is ready, the capstan crews will be called to action for the first lift. Once in position, it is locked into a masonry base. At this point, the parts for the spire and upper section are assembled and sequenced and raised up to allow the next section to be assembled. At the same time the sections are being assembled below, the roofers can be busy sheathing and cladding the spire and setting the cross. Subject to New Zealand's safety codes, netting and careful walling off could allow two crews to work above one another. With some planning, the frames that hold the ring of bells could be fabricated and installed in the upper section prior to it being sent aloft. Of necessity, the wooden sections have to fit inside the stone base. This results in a stepping in of the silhouette where the timber frame structure extends past the stone base. The design was developed specifically to allow the silhouette of the original tower to be duplicated. That requires the bell level facade to be built out to the width of the base. That could be done in lighter wooden construction at the time of the raising of the steeple or in stone as time and money permit. Either way, the steeple would be flexible and structurally independent. Alternately, the bell level facade could depart from the original, perhaps including Maori or other New Zealand motifs. The plan calls for the steeple sections to be raised into place by teams of people pushing 16 or more capstans in Cathedral Square. Man-powered capstans give hundreds of people the chance to rebuild their own city and take ownership in the project. Beyond the crews on the capstans, Hundreds more volunteers can help with cooking, logistics, crowd control, and other tasks. To lift the sections of the steeple will employ a variation of the time-proven rig used to raise top masts on sailing ships. The rigging would be stress-tested and have a huge safety factor built in. Only competent riggers would set out the rigging. In the weeks leading up to the 22nd February target date for the raising, Cathedral Square will be a hive of activity. Hands will be unloading the containers and double-checking all of the parts. Rigging will get shaken out and inspected. Anchor points for turning blocks and capstans set into the ground. Crews of volunteer razors will be trained to work as a team and handle heavy loads with their capstan. Food will be served to hungry, grateful workers. New friendships will be forged, new skills learned. As always, insurmountable obstacles will have to be overcome or ignored. While all this is going on, we'll ask Father, Dean Beck to write the best builder's prayer ever. We'll want all the help and oversight that the Almighty can spare on raising day. We will frame the tower sections from heavy timbers. Timber framing is an ancient, time-proven craft that utilizes sustainable natural materials to build significant and substantial structures that are beautiful and durable just like the timber roof in the cathedral. The craft employs careful joinery 
and the understanding of the inherent strengths and weaknesses of wood rather than an over-reliance on metal fasteners. For centuries, practitioners of this craft and their neighbors have come together to raise structures that would have been impossible to raise as individuals. The Timber Framers Guild in Canada and the U.S. together with the U.K.'s Carpenters Fellowship continue that tradition. To shoulder some of the burden and augment the resources of Canterbury, we would be drawing on their skills and resources to prefabricate the spire and bell tower. This would give many talented people an opportunity to give of their skills and time even if they cannot travel to New Zealand to help. Both the Guild and Fellowship have agreed in principle to participating in this project if the decision makers in Christchurch adopt this concept for rebuilding the steeple. For many decades, the Guild has been doing pro bono work and commissioned volunteer projects that benefit the communities in which we build. We make a point of fully including, involving, and sharing with anyone interested in learning. Such are the skills, craft, and resources of the Guild and Fellowship that we would like to bring to bear in Christchurch. In brief, provides a positive beacon of hope early in the city's recovery effort. Would be one of the first projects of the permanent rebuild of the city and a potent symbol to Christians and non-Christians alike. We rebuild the familiar shape and form of the original steeple, but with a lighter, flexible, and earthquake-resistant structure. Sends the message near and far that Christ Church is on the mend. Uses time-tested, human-scale methods to raise the structure into place. Everyone participating takes ownership and becomes a stakeholder. Builds on the model of the Farmy Army and the Cardboard Cathedral build. Could be raised on the second anniversary of the earthquake. Raising would start in the morning, the bells would be ringing by the evening. Builds links and understanding between New Zealand and the rest of the Commonwealth and the world. Augments, but not replaces, Christchurch's resource base with skills and materials and volunteers from around the world. Articulating tower sections and mass damper reduce the effects of future quakes. It's built to take a shake. Uses renewable and sustainable resources. Long-lived construction. A similar steeple in Rhode Island was built in 1726, two years before Captain Cook was born. Opportunities to incorporate Maori and European elements. Assuming that the temporary cardboard cathedral would be sited in Cathedral Square in a position opposite the wounded cathedral, the new iteration of the bell tower could serve the congregation and city with its proper role from the day it's raised. Hello, I'm Marcus Brandt. You've seen the video now. Does this project make sense to you? Would you like to help? As you can see, the project depends on the support and efforts of hundreds of people working together, people like you and me. The church is now considering this plan. If they are to take the decision to adopt it, they will need to know that they have the support that they need. And that's where you come in. Ring the cathedral or go to their website and leave a message of support for this idea. While you're at it, offer to help. Offer your financial support too. Talk to your friends and family about the project and ask them to do the same. Urge the cathedral to stabilize the remains of the bell tower and refrain from any further demolition until this option is considered in detail. The city government has an important part to play, too. Contact the mayor and the city council and urge them to do their part. This project does not work without their full cooperation and support. If you have any thoughts or comments to share about this project, or if you want more information, visit our website. In war and peace, the world has been able to count on New Zealanders to help bear terrible burdens in far-off lands. Not surprisingly, you have many friends worldwide that would love to return the favor. Let's work together. Let's strive together to put the cathedral's beautiful spire back on the skyline of Christchurch where it belongs. Afterwards, we can enjoy the sound of the bells together. We're willing to help if you're willing to have us. Thanks for listening. Your friend, Marcus. <laughs>